Hello, everyone on the call. Thank you for joining today's webinar, Partnering for Advanced Networks with Wirepass and Link Labs. We're going to wait a few more minutes for everyone else to join. For anyone just joining, thank you for attending today's webinar on partnering for advanced networks with Wirepath and Link Labs. We're gonna get started here in just another minute or two. All right, thank you again for joining everybody. We're gonna start things off today with some introductions. Today on the webinar, we have Yusuf Kamel of Wirepass. He is the SVP of Smart Tracking Business. And since starting with Wirepass in 2015, he has overseen Wirepass's smart tracking initiatives globally and created Wirepass USA while running operations in the Americas as a general manager. Before joining Wirepass, Yusuf held executive positions in the semiconductor industry with over 20 years of experience in conducting business and introducing innovative products in the digital consumer and the wireless industries. Next up, we have Mark Blakel. He is the chief hardware engineer at Link Labs. He designs and builds all of Link Labs hardware, including radios, devices, and modules. Before Link Labs, Mark worked for TMC Design, building GPS jammers at Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico. He also worked at the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab for eight years, where he completed his master's degree in electrical engineering. And last but not least, we have Scott Wohler, principal architect at Link Labs. Scott has 20 plus years of hardware design and software development experience with a focus on system architecture embedded Linux software development, microcontroller firmware development, and wireless protocol expertise. Since joining Link Labs, he has completed numerous achievements such as the development of Symphony Link, AirFinder Gateways, and AirFinder APs. Other notable achievements include the creation of solutions for helmet impact monitoring and fetal heart rate monitoring. Here is an overview of today's webinar agenda. We will start things off by giving brief introductions to both Wirepass and Link Labs, a brief overview of our partnership, product roadmap and evolution, architecture and integration, ending with benefits and use cases, and then opening it up with some final thoughts and questions. Uh, before we dive in, I encourage anyone on the call to utilize the question or chat box for any questions that may arise, and we will be happy to address them throughout the course of the webinar. Um, this webinar is also being recorded and will be shared after the event. And with that, I will kick things off to Scott. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Georgiana, for the intros. Um, so I've been working with Link Labs for about seven years. The, the company is about eight years old uh, and you know, today our big focus is asset tracking uh, and general IoT data. And, uh, you know, some of our products include, uh, you know, the uh, uh, indoor tracking with our AirFinder on-site system, uh, you know, using infrastructure and off-the-shelf tags, uh, as well as AirFinder Everywhere, which includes our super tag that has uh, both indoor and outdoor capability. Uh, today we have about 200,000 devices and, and those are growing pretty rapidly. Um, and as, as a direct result of that, we've, we're processing a significant amount of data. Um, over the last year, it's increased quite a bit, uh, up to perhaps a billion events per month right now, and we're continuing to increase. Uh, today, we have, we're have we hovering at about 60 employees, uh, and we have quite a portfolio of patents under our belt, going all the way back to our Symphony Link stuff and even for this AirFinder, uh, AirFinder stuff that we're and we're still filing more patents as well.
All right, I will jump back in and provide a quick overview of our awards at Link Labs. Um, these are just some of our highlighted awards here. They're internationally recognized and some previous winners include some pretty, pretty big names in the tech industry. So IBM, GE and Apple were very proud to present these alongside our solutions. So I'll take the next slide. Uh, thank you very much, Georgiana and uh, Scott, for this introduction. Uh, good morning, good, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Youssef Kamel, heading the Smart Tracking Initiatives at Warpass. Uh, I want to thank Link Labs for this webinar, and I'm very pleased to introduce Warpass before I hand over to Mark and Scott, who will talk about um, Link Labs' experience with our technology. So for those who don't know us, Warpass is a Finnish company with headquarters in uh, Tampere, in Finland. We focus on delivering industrial grade mesh for massive IoT applications. We're around 70 people today, and uh, we have more than a thousand developers actively using the, the Warpass software. Partnership is in our DNA, and uh, we have more than 200 active partners today who collaborate together to provide full turnkey solutions to our customers and to accelerate their time to market. More than 4 million devices are connected with Warpass in smart metering, smart building, smart manufacturing, and smart tracking. And the same way as um, Link Labs, we have a very strong patent portfolio uh, in the wireless technology. So one of the reasons, uh, some of the reasons why uh, our customers choose Wirepass is that, as mentioned, Wirepass is a proven at very large scale on millions of devices. Uh, the, the largest mesh in the world uses Wirepass in smart metering and has uh, around 1 million meters interconnected in a single network. The system is extremely easy to install because every node can be battery operated and can act as a router. So there is no need for a heavy infrastructure or network planning. Uh, the, the, the other point is that we save kilometers of wiring in industrial spaces we can deploy without disturbing the business operations. And finally, WordPress connectivity is a polite protocol that does not interfere with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or other uh, types of networks. So it keeps your network uh, clean. So here's a quick overview of the, the solution that we are offering. So, so this is the Warpass connectivity suite. It's a complete sensor to cloud system. And it includes, first of all, Warpass connectivity on the right, which is delivered as a binary that you can program to your radio device. Uh, Warpass supports 2.4 gigahertz. It supports sub gigahertz. And we will soon introduce the support for 1.9 gigahertz band with the DEC 2020, which has uh, very recently been standardized and pushed to the standard by Wirepass. Any device having Wirepass binary and the network credentials can join the network, establish upstream or downstream or node to node communication, and at the same time act as a router to extend the network coverage. The, the nice thing or the special thing about Wirepass is that all networking decisions are taken by the nodes themselves. There's no central decision point. So, so uh, with this, there is no need for any kind of specific routers or network controllers or networking tables because the nodes actually take all the decisions. The other thing here in the middle is that we, we provide an SDK that runs on the radio CPU for application development. And we also deliver a set of application examples for sensing and asset tracking. The SDK natively supports remote update, remote firmware update. It also supports security. And um, uh, also we have the, developed and introduced recently uh, an automatic provisioning scheme, which allows devices to actually declare themselves 
to the network, get authenticated, and then uh, get uh, accepted in the network. When uh, uh, on, on the upper side, we also provide the WordPress Linux gateway and cloud APIs, which are, we are available in open source in our GitHub. And we provide two sets of tools in the cloud, the WordPress network tool for network diagnostic and network health monitoring, uh, and also the WordPress positioning engine, which provides indoor uh, asset location. So with all of this suite, our customers actually can uh, uh, very much accelerate the introduction of their IoT products to the market. All right, so I'm going to provide a, an overview of our XLE location system. So Link Lab's specialty is really in low power location systems and uh, our latest and most advanced offering is what we call uh, AirFinder Onsite XLE. So uh, the system consists of five components. We have uh, asset tags. So these are off the shelf BLE tags, uh, which get loaded with our custom firmware. <clears throat> uh, then we have location beacons. Uh, these are installed throughout uh, your coverage area in an approximate grid pattern. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly that it just makes installation easier. Uh, usually at around a seven to 10 meter spacing, depending on, on the particulars of your install. And so these location beacons are used by the tags to, to locate themselves. Once they've done that, then they uh, will use access points, which are also uh, installed throughout the facility to uh, flow that data back. And so access points are kind of like the bridge. And so this is where WirePass comes in. You know, access points serve as the bridge from the kind of very simple low power protocol running on the tags to uh, eventually uh, getting back to the gateway in the cloud. So that data from the tags gets aggregated at the access point, flows over the wire pass mesh to the gateway. Um, usually one, two gateways per site is sufficient. Uh, and then from there it flows to uh, our, our cloud service. Um, and uh, at that point, the data is accessible um, in a couple of different ways. We have a user interface. You can upload floor plans, um, can be white labeled, so it can have your company logo on it, or, or you can access your data directly via APIs. Um, uh, next slide. Uh, so we have a question. Sure. Someone asked, what is XLE stand for? Good question, actually. So I'm going to go into more detail on that on the, on the next two slides. So um, okay. we'll do that. And then if, uh, if I haven't answered your question, feel free to jump in and, uh, and uh, ask. So XLE really has two components. So there's uh, kind of a networking communication component and a, a location component. So I'll talk about both of those. Um, first is the networking part. So um, really it's just, no, XLE is kind of a stripped down, simplified protocol, um, optimized for low power MDM communication. So um, uh, the energy used per uplink is, is minute. It's about 60 nanowatt hours. Uh, if you look at the energy in your typical coin cell, that maps to millions of uplinks from a coin cell uh, are possible. And notably that that uh, that communication is fully acknowledged. So we have fully acknowledged uplinks and also fully acknowledged downlinks. You can send messages down to tags um, and, and it's acknowledged each step of the way. <clears throat> uh, because of that, because we have that uplink downlink capability, we also have uh, firmware over the air uh, capability. So we can push um, firmware updates through the network um, uh, to devices on the edge. Uh, I see that question. Yes, XLE is proprietary to link labs. Um, we have uh, uh, interference avoidance built in. Everyone who works in the 2.4 gigahertz um, bands knows you, you have to deal with it, interference avoidance. So uh, we have that in. And uh, really importantly, the network is completely standalone. Um, so we don't, you know, if you remember from the previous slide, uh, we flow over the wire pass mesh back to the gateway and then over cellular to the cloud. We don't touch the network. Um, anyone that's tried to hang a, a third party device off of, you know, a, a company network knows it can be very difficult to get that through, uh, through IT. So in our case, we are completely separate. Um, so just one thing I wanted to highlight with this uh, before moving on to discuss about the locations is, uh, is kind of case study here. So we actually have this installed at a heavy equipment manufacturer. And they only wanted to track equipment moving around their line initially. 
Um, so they installed the system and it was working for that. And then at some point they decided, you know, just a couple weeks ago, they decided that they wanted uh, to add some custom proximity sensors. <clears throat> and so the nice thing about uh, this system is, is, you know, you customers installed like that, trying to get a, just trying to track things. But in so doing, they've also installed a, a general purpose IoT network that's just there. So in this case, we were able to get prototypes of that sensor built in days using off-the-shelf hardware and sent to them and it communicated over their installed XLE network. They plugged them in and it just worked. Um, and then now with this uh, partnership with WirePass, that also opens the door for WirePass sensors. So there's a there's a whole suite of sensors that are off the shelf for WirePass. Either one of those would work in your system. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a, a powerful thing. And then just, uh, oh, sorry, one more thing. Um, yeah, and then just on the right here, this is actually, so this is a, a current versus time plot of um, a tag that's doing a location scan and an uplink. And um, so you can see energy consumption is very low. These location scans are quick. Uh, and the uplinks are even faster, about 10 milliseconds. Um, okay, next slide. So uh, the location technology. Now I'm just gonna do a thumbnail sketch of this today. If you are interested in this, we are actually doing a webinar uh, a week from Thursday on March 3rd. So I urge you to sign up for that. Um, I'll, I'll be going into a lot more detail then. But um, basically, so the, the I talked about the networking part of XLE. The other part is location. Um, and so basically this is a, 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 the location system is built on our phase ranging technology. So uh, in a nutshell, instead of measuring time, round trip time to, to locate uh, for the tag to locate itself, it measures round trip phase. Uh, there's a lot to that. Like I said, I'll, I'd go in more detail on the, on the other webinar, but basically it, it allows us to use these off the shelf ICs. Uh, it's much more efficient processing. Um, and because it's so efficient, that means that the tags themselves can actually calculate their location. Um, they're location aware, they know where they're at. They're, they're the ones that you know, come up with these XYZ coordinates and uplink that. So that, that opens all sorts of interesting possibilities for applications. Um, but the real reason we did it is because uh, it drastically lowers backhaul bandwidth. Um, a lot of other systems that are doing this, the tags are, are not capable of calculating these locations on their own. And so you have to, you have to flow a lot of raw data out, uh, somehow, either to an edge processor or up to the cloud. Um, and so using low power wide area networks isn't really an option. You know, you, they just don't have the bandwidth. Um, and that means you're running ethernet or you're trying to get on the Wi-Fi. Um, so in our case, when the tags calculate their location and, and send that data up, it's like a dozen bytes or two dozen bytes. It's, it's not much data at all. So we can use the systems like WirePass or, or previous technology. Um, uh, and so again, you know, this runs on off the shelf BLE tags. Uh, and that's important because it doesn't get much cheaper than BLE radios. You know, it's a very, it's highly commoditized. You have lots of people building them. And so uh, it's, it's always going to be kind of your lowest cost option. Um, unlike angle of arrival, we don't need any special antenna arrays. We use the normal built-in uh, antennas on these tags. Um, and <clears throat> because we're also using the BLE radio, um, it's, it's always going to be lower cost than something like ultra wideband, which needs a separate radio for, for ranging. Um, so, uh, and, and kind of like with the communication part, you know, the, the location technology is also very low power. You consume about 1.2 microwatt hours per fix. So that's hundreds of thousands up to a million, depending on, on the coin cell um, fixes per battery charge. Um, so uh, accuracy, of course, is, is what everyone's concerned about with RTLS systems. So. You know, if you kind of think of this as a, as a, if you imagine a curve or a line, right? Uh, you know, on one end you have low power, low cost. So that's BLE proximity. And so uh, it's also, or I'm sorry, low cost, low accuracy. accuracy. So uh, BLE proximity, you're talking 10 plus meters um, for location updates, but it's cheap. Um, and then on the high end, high accuracy, high cost, you have ultra wideband. Uh, you know, you get down to centimeter accuracy, but you're going to pay for it. It's very expensive. Um, what Link Labs is trying to do is is bend this curve, and so we're we're getting as accurate as we can, you know, as close as we can to ultra wideband, but but also keeping kind of the the cost benefit of a pure BLE system. And so uh, the numbers we hit typically, you know, one to two and a half meters. Um, so one meters is good. Uh, if you know you're in a, a good environment, good line of sight, not a lot of interference, 
um, you know, we can definitely hit one meter. Uh, if you have a lot of metal or, or uh, uh, inter high interference, um, you know, things like that uh, in your facility, then, you know, we're going to be up closer to the two, two and a half meter mark. Um, but, uh, you know, to kind of illustrate some of this, these two graphics over here. So in the upper right, that's an actual, that's actual data from a tag um, at my, my test site here. So that green cross, um, so I put the tag on that table at where that green cross is. Uh, the red X is where the tag actually reported its location. And I had it in a diagnostic mode. And so that's what these rings are. So you can, this, this is what the tag measured. Um, those dots are location beacons and the rings are the ranges it measured to them. So you can see it's fantastic. I mean, it's not always that good, but it's, it's, this, was a, this was a very good case. Um, you know, usually at this site, I get around a meter. Um, so uh, yeah, so you can see that. And then the lower right here, this is data that we actually collected from a test site. Uh, it was a warehouse and um, a good environment, I would say. And we placed test sites or test tags throughout the site and collected a lot of data. So in this case, this represents over 2000 fixes, 2000 data points. Uh, and then we generated these curves. And so what this shows you is, uh, it's a CDF, uh, cumulative distribution function. So it shows you the location accuracy you know, by percentile. So uh, we use 90th percentile for a benchmark. Um, and so what you can see is each one of these, uh, these curves represents different numbers of averaging. The tag can average locations before it sends them up. And so you can see once we hit three averages, so the tag does three scans, averages the results and sends it. Uh, we're at a meter accuracy. And if you need more than that, you know, we can dial that up. Um, you know, you can see in this case, we kind of bottomed out at uh, six tenths of a meter. Um, but not bad for a, a very low cost system. Um, and uh, yep, I think that's actually up. Hopefully, Thank you, this was a really <laughs> very clear and amazing uh, oh, results with, uh, with technology, which is, of course, much cheaper than ultra wide band. Well done, guys. Um, so, so th this picture actually shows the, the the applications that we usually focus on at Wirepass. The first of all, the smart tracking, of course, like uh, Mark was presenting, and uh, Link Labs is an excellent example. This is the fastest growing area that we have, uh, and um, Wirepass delivers here the the connectivity to enable for uh, location, and uh, of course, we we also address other use cases that then uh, RTLS, where we have a larger number of nodes where customers use us for inventory or end-to-end -end supply chain monitoring. Second, uh, vertical is smart buildings, where usually uh, uh, our customers use us in the lighting uh, system itself. And WirePass uh, is used for lighting control, but also uh, in most of the cases, the lighting infrastructure becomes a network uh, connected with Wirepass to put, to collect sensing data or people or asset location inside the building. And then um, uh, the, the third vertical is smart manufacturing. And in this case, uh, Wirepass uh, provides uh, uh, systems for preventive maintenance and control. So our customers actually develop those, those systems based on the Wirepass technology. And the advantage there is, of course, to have these uh, battery operated sensors that act as a router so no infrastructure and they can deploy on thousands of uh, of um, engines there and the last last but not least is the smart metering where uh, wirepass is deployed in more than two two million uh, smart meters today uh, in scandinavia and india is just ramping up and we we see a very large volumes of deployment there Okay, so um, thank you, Youssef. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what it means to partner with Wirepass and why we chose this route. Um, so, you know, we we were working primarily off of our you know low power uh, LoRa based technology called Symphony Link, and decided at some point that we were going to need better capacity, better redundancy, better security, and so we decided to approach Wirepass. And um, <clears throat> so, what does that mean? Uh, so working with Wirepass, you know, Yusuf mentioned earlier, they provide customers with the stack, the SDK, uh, to integrate uh, that stack and, you know, taking from their, uh, you know, nomenclature, very good support. They've been very helpful about um, 
helping us solve challenges that we've run into. Uh, their ticketing system is great and their, their engineers are very, very responsive and very helpful. Uh, so we've integrated this now into our AirFinder solution. Uh, the AirFinder on site now, uh, the access points are using WirePez as a backhaul mechanism. And what does that provide? So it allows us to do several things. Um, primarily with SymphonyLink, we've been tied to uh, you know domestic uh, deployments because you know the 900 megahertz band isn't isn't available worldwide in the same way. Um, you know, so WirePaz opens up the possibility for international deployments. Uh, it it actually lowered the cost of our infrastructure because LoRa stuff is expensive, and the way we've manufactured this stuff in the past has has been a little bit costly. Um, it provides us with better latency, better throughput. Uh, the provisioning aspects are really are really well thought out. Uh, we've been we we integrated that almost immediately so that we could um, start start making that a first class option in our system. And uh, you know, customers get a full end to end solution. They don't have to worry about the networking aspects, um, etc. So, uh, and one thing that Mark mentioned is WirePaz has. Partnership is in their blood, so they've, they've been offering, uh, you know, with other partners, sensors that are off the shelf. In fact, when I started testing the system, I grabbed a couple uh, temperature tags uh, from one of the companies that they partner with and introduced it into the system. And I put them throughout the house just to kind of prove out, um, you know, the technology at the time. Uh, so we're still working on this integration. We're pretty close to pilot deployments. Um, and, and so we would expect to see commercial deployments later this year and at the beginning of next year. Thanks, Scott. We have a yep. question. Any sure. wire, any wire pass lighting projects in NA? Yeah, thanks for uh, for the question. Uh, yes, there are a number of lighting uh, projects in uh, North America. None of them in, is public, though, so I, I cannot um, I cannot actually mention any uh, public deployment. There is one which is dim on off in uh, street lighting, not necessarily in building lighting, but we we have a number of. Uh, uh, customers that are developing their next generation lighting solution with WirePass and integrating actively. So we should see some uh, some announcements uh, before the end of this year. Okay, thank you. Uh, just just a quick brief about you know our our previous technology, which was SymphonyLink. So. Um, Symphony Link is a LoRa based network protocol layer that we built uh, back in 2013 and 2014, uh, and we've been using it to date. Uh, it's it's essentially a, a competitor to LoRaWAN. Um, at the time, it was it was pretty advanced, uh, and you know, obviously, other things have come, have set to match that over time. Uh, again, it uses the 900 megahertz ISM band, but uh, one of the downsides is it requires custom hardware. And Link Labs is trying to get away from manufacturing our own hardware as much as possible. Uh, so we we target a lot of off the shelf stuff now, and and, uh, and we're trying to get away from uh, building our own custom modules. Next slide. Uh, just a quick comparison for anybody who doesn't know. You know, WirePaz is obviously a mesh technology. It's great for high density applications. Uh, you know, in the two point four gig band, um, you know, it offers you know a lot of redundancy because it is a mesh by, by its nature uh and as yousef mentioned it has you know the, the local networking aspect of it so it's fairly scalable and there's a lot of redundancy baked into that uh whereas symphony link you know it may still be suited for applications that require longer ranges and lower density of nodes um and so that's you know kind of the trade-off there between the two uh one other next slide please Thank you. Uh, one other thing, I, I just just as another comparison that I want to mention. Uh, so we were concerned about latency and capacity uh, with Symphony Link. It can be up to six seconds when the messages are acknowledged uh, before you can send another message. Um, and so the throughput, by its nature, because it's LoRa based, um, is pretty low. Uh, we've we've over the years have found lots of ways of optimizing that, um, and in the way the gateways are set up uh, with the concentrator and we've got some other stuff in there, but, but um, you know, the throughput for the gateway is even pretty low uh, by the nature of the network with WirePaz, on the other hand, two seconds is kind of at the upper end of the range of latency. And I've seen most of the messages we see are under like 
40 milliseconds of delivery time, even through multiple hops in the network. It really depends on the hop count. Um, but you know, the 99th percentile based on their own metrics, which they provide when you, when you partner with them, um, you know, it's up to two seconds. Uh, and, and, uh, you know, naturally the node throughput is much better and, and even the gateway throughput, uh, is, is by sync. And so significantly greater throughput, uh, and gateways can have multiple syncs on them in increasing that throughput, even to an even higher level, um, as long as your gateway can, can handle that. We have another question. Um, someone asked why we would stop making our own Symphony Link hardware, or why are we now working with WirePass in that regard? Yeah, because um, you know we there's a couple of reasons. So we've decided to settle around this ecosystem of a particular vendor of chips, and we're using that for all of our devices. So that that gives us um, you know a common common system that we can use for our code. Um, WirePass happens to support this, this same vendor. Um, it happens to be Nordic. You know, there's a lot of Nordic devices out there. Um, the other thing is, you know, operations is expensive for manufacturing your own hardware. And not only that, but you have to set up, uh, you know, contract manufacturers for testing and, and spinning up custom test suites for a lot of the hardware. You know, the yields may not be great all the time, depending on who your contract manufacturer is. So, you know, just manufacturing hardware gives a lot of, there's a lot of overhead associated with that. And we're trying to, we're trying to avoid doing that in, in the future. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Maybe if I, if I can add from um, other uh, of our partners, basically, uh, one, one extra point is, is the flexibility to have hardware available that you didn't plan for. So, for example, if you need a specific form factor that the, your customer is asking for, or if you need a, a specificity in terms of ruggedization of, or ATX uh, capability or a specific cost point that you didn't develop for, you have bas uh, basically a number of uh, uh, tag vendors and uh, hardware providers that can fill in those gaps. That's correct. Yeah, there is a big ecosystem out there too. Um, yes, thank you, Yusuf. That's valid. Um, just a, just a few other, somebody asked, you know, about why did we go with WirePass? You know, here's some of the benefits. You know, in, in our own technology, we had to build in a lot of the features on our own. Nothing, you know, it's not like stuff was off the shelf for us. So um, here, again, we get, you know, global coverage with 2.4 gig. And even in the future, talking about using the deck band, the 1.9 gigahertz stuff, uh, we're in talks with WirePass now about exploring that. Um, the scalability is much better. Uh, you know, I mentioned the capacity and, and again, the features that were already built into WirePaz when we, when we approach them, um, we are, uh, we are using the OTAP stuff pretty heavily. We've got our own DFU process under the hood. Um, and so OTAP allows us to propagate scratch pads, not just for replacing the stack, the WirePaz stack, but our host applications on the access points, as well as tag and beacon firmware. And, and we're using the OTAP process for that. Uh, that was a pretty pretty good transition, pretty easy transition into that. Um, you know, they offer first class security. Can't join a network without the credentials, and the provisioning process is controlled by, you know, the deploy people who are doing the deployments, and so that allows us to authenticate and allow only nodes that we know about. Um, and all of the all of the technology today is using the you know standard off the shelf messaging protocols like MQTT. Uh, protocol buffers under the hood, which we've adopted for our own messaging um, to make it easy to transition. Um, and, you know, WirePass provided us with this, uh, this uh, the WNT, the WirePass network tool that we're able to self-host. And it was actually fairly straightforward to set up and get up and running. Um, and the gateway even, you know, we, we've we worked with off-the-shelf gateways. Uh, we've even worked with our own gateways that we typically use for Symphony Link. Uh, but we were able to integrate the the sync and transport services pretty readily. Uh, and, you know, although we are using Nordic devices today, there's an expanding uh, chipset support out there uh, for other vendors as well that we occasionally run across. Uh, and and we, may, we may go down that road in the future. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how we talked about why we partnered with WirePath. I'm going to talk about how we did this a little bit. Um, so, so, 
as Mark mentioned, you know, access points are a critical part of our infrastructure. And uh, what they do is they basically bridge our XLE, uh, AirFinder XLE to the network. And so our network now is using WirePaz on our access points. Um, we decided to use a what we're calling a dual MCU uh, approach. And this gives us flexibility because uh, WirePaz already has a mesh API that we can interact with. Uh, the stack runs on a single processor. Our host application runs on another processor. And the uh, we use the UART to communicate between the two of them. Because we're heavily using the 2.4 gig radio on these devices for XLE, uh, I think it made more sense for us to do it this way, uh, even at the increased cost of adding another processor is still cheaper than our Symphony Link stuff. Um, you know, these the, the processes that are available are pretty, pretty cheap these days. Um, you know, Symphony Link did have a, a, an equivalent interface that we called the host interface. Um, and we're we're sharing uh, external flash for OTAP images and our own images as well. Uh, so this is this is essentially the firmware integration uh, that we've done on the access point. And I'll jump to uh, the rest of the integration here. Uh, so on the different pieces of the system, I mentioned the access point, of course. Uh, all of our access points are powered, uh, so everything is running in low latency mode. We're already using the 5.2 stack uh, on, on those access points. Uh, the the gateways we we have a couple options we have we have a gateway that has two syncs already integrated um, and those are pretty easy to update so we've been able to to update those to 5.2 as well um, you know typical in uh, typical applications already running on on gateways that you know the sync and transport services that wirepass provides um, and what we've actually done is we've spun up our own self-hosted WNT that we use primarily for diagnostics of the nodes, authentication. Um, you know, we can get real-time data just by subscribing to the brokers on there. Uh, but we also have a third-party device management platform that we've integrated. And, and we've, able, we've been able to integrate that pretty easily just by spinning up a second transport service on the gateway and providing uh, credentials for the, there's a local broker proxy on the gateway that we can just configure the transport service to talk to that. And that's been working uh, fairly well. Okay, Scott, so we have a question. Um, I think this was related to a slide a couple back, but the question is, how does this compare with LoRaWAN? Um, I think I, we're happy to answer that question. I think that's outside of the scope of this presentation because uh, that's our old technology, Symphony Link. So maybe we address that offline. Georgiana, what do you think? Sure, yeah, we'll be happy to follow up with any questions um, after this as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and just here's like a 10,000 foot view of our system. Um, Mark already mentioned these different pieces of the system. So we've got our tags, our off the shelf tags. Uh, we put custom firmware on there. Uh, we, you know, we build these access points. You know, we still build some hardware. We can't completely get away from it. Um, but, but uh, you know, we, we uh, put our host application and the WirePass stack on these. Um, the location beacons are used. Um, you know, they're also built by us. Uh, there are some that are off the shelf that we've pro we've programmed that are battery powered. All of these are primarily powered. Um, the options are, I see somebody asked about power sources. Um, the options are essentially, you know, AC power that passes through the outlets um, for the access points and the location beacons. Uh, we also have a DC power option. Uh, I think it's 20, is it 24 volts, Mark? 12 volts or 24 volts? Uh, it's 12 to 24. 12 to 24. So we can daisy chain uh, DC. And this this actually, uh, this approach works where there's no power drops. And so, um, you know, we have applications where we put uh, location beacons and access points uh, up on sort of steel girders. And typically what we'll do is we'll run a, uh, you know, a plank with all these devices pre-mounted and run DC along them. Um, that's a, a primary, you know, use case of the DC uh, version of these, but, but we have both options. Um, and then we've got our gateways that we that we uh, configure to 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 connect to the WNT and our device management platform. Uh, just real quick on this, uh, so our gateways, uh, like I mentioned, we talked to the WNT and our third-party uh, device management platform. 
And to do that, we 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 actually saw an edge client on the gateway that uh, acts as a uh, a broker pro MQTT broker proxy. So the transport service can connect right to that. Uh, this gives us the ability uh, to deploy microservices down to our gateways to do some edge processing. Uh, so today we have uh, there's like a bridge that does data transformation. Uh, there's some other services that handle you know OTAP messages, provisioning messages. And we can do that all at the edge rather than sort of um, creating unnecessary traffic on the cloud side, which which we're very sensitive to. We uh, the edge processing is kind of the future of of these kinds of IoT deployments. And uh, to facilitate that, we like to push applications down without having to explicitly package and deploy them through other means. Um, but the, the the device management platform allows us to do that. Slide. Uh, and so uh, I wanted to bring up, this is, I threw this in here just real quick. I wanted to talk about, you know, there are always, there are always challenges with integration. And this is one of the minor challenges we ran into um, that uh, we were able to pretty, pretty easily solve. But uh, I wanted to point it out. Um, so SymphonyLink had a MTU of 255 bytes. So that's what we had built our systems around. WirePaz provides uh, MTU of 102 uh, by nature of the protocol. And so we realized quickly that our messages, rather than trying to change all of our message specifications down at the tag layer, uh, what we opted to do uh, was come up with a fragmentation scheme at the access point layer. So today, uh, you know, using Protobuf, you know, we, we include, we include a metadata header that gives us information about uh, whether the message is fragmented and and details about the fragments, uh, you know, ordering uh, the fragment ID, etc. And this allows us to send these messages out of order. They can go through one route or another, one sync or another. And and when we collect them, we're able to to reassemble them um, within some uh, reasonable time frame. Reasonable time frame. And we do the same thing for downlink. We fragment the messages before we push them to the network. And the the benefit of having those uh, microservices deployable to the edge is we can do this right on the edge and we don't have to flow everything up to the cloud and process it up there before we push it to, uh, you know, our databases or, um, you know, any of our, uh, additional upstream processing. Next slide. Yeah, this is just a quick graphic on that. So essentially, you know, the, the end node payload when it's received by the access point, and that could be a tag or a beacon. Uh, we throw a header on there, uh, we wrap it in sort of a transport layer, and if if the serialized version of that message is going to be more than 102 bytes, basically we fragment it uh, and, and add, add some uh, transport header information that gives us, uh, you know, the ability to reconstruct those once we, um, once we receive them. Uh, I think uh, Mark is going to talk about this part, but uh, thank you. Sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just wanted to recap um, benefits and use cases here. So, uh, you know, I think Scott hit on most of these. Really, the big, the biggest we're most excited about is uh, global cap global capability and uh, ability to operate internationally. Um, and uh, we think that uh, with WirePass plus uh, XLE, we've got uh, one of the most affordable solutions for uh, indoor location tracking. Uh, and I think it strikes a really good compromise between cost and um, location accuracy. It's kind of the most bang for your buck um, uh, in that space. And, uh, and again, the ability, you know, the ability to add more uh, off the shelf wire pass sensors and tags, expand our ecosystem is a really powerful thing that we're, we're very excited about. Um, so some example use cases, um, you know, I, I mentioned work in progress already. You know, I, I think that's a that's a good one. Um, you know, also, uh, so actually, our our pilot installation now. Um, you know, this is the customers doing work in progress tracking with the goal of improves, improving the process efficiency. So identifying bottlenecks, um, generating metrics, and and things like that to improve the process. Uh, equipment tool tracking, um, and I'll, I'll kind of tie that in with compliance as well. We've had um, several um, uh, people come to us, uh, you know, they have very uh, specialized tools that have strict calibration requirements and 
you know, then maybe they have to calibrate them every couple of months and they have a hard time finding them all. So, um, you know, the, our solution with XLE is a, is a good way to, to track those and, and locate them when it comes time to, to calibrate them. And then, you know, loss prevention, personnel management, we didn't get too much into the, the kind of UI and, and backend features we have, but uh, we have things like zone alerting. Uh, so if you um, wanted to tag assets or, or if you had personnel and you wanted to make sure they weren't going somewhere they're not supposed to, uh, we can set up zone alerts um, to facilitate that. Um, yeah, maybe maybe before we close, Georgiana, I, I just want to thank you uh, again. Uh, and I, I also want to mention it's been a, a real pleasure uh, to work with such a competent partner as Link Labs. It's been um, it's been a, a very rich tech, technology and also business interaction with your team. So it's been uh, it's been great. It's also I'm also very pleased by the, the 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 fact that you have actually used all the technology that we are providing. Uh, so you, you, you're using our OTAP, you're using the um, WMT tool, and you've been able to integrate all of those in, inside your products. And um, that's that's a very rich kind of uh, I mean provides you with a very rich uh, library and uh, capabilities embedded in your uh, your devices and your products. Uh, and the last thing is you also use some of the uh, partners that WordPress has uh, for, for the devices. So it's, it's, it's a very, very strong example of uh, what uh, what we kind of dream of as a as a partnership. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, of course. I think it's been wonderful working with the Wirepass team as well. And I'm excited to see what our next stage in this partnership looks like. Uh, we did have one more question um, that might be helpful for other folks on the call to hear. Um, what length battery life do you typically see? And I'm assuming that's in relation to our XLE solution. Scott, if you want to chime in and provide the answer for that. Actually, I think Mark would be better suited to answer the tag question. Yeah, so um, we have two form factors for our XLE tags. Um, one is a larger, we call it puck tag. It's still not terribly large, um, but it uses a uh, CR2477 battery. And uh, with that, you can easily get you know, five, six, seven years uh, battery life. It really depends on your particular settings, how often they're doing location uh, updates and things like that. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, upwards of seven years is definitely possible. And then our smaller tags, they're just a little bit larger than a postage stamp. Um, those use a CR2016 battery. Uh, and, uh, and those are, uh, you know, anywhere from six months if you have them doing updates really fast uh, and uh, otherwise they, those can last up to years as well if you have them updating on a slower rate. Um, so yeah, it really does depend a lot on, on your particular use case. Okay, thank you so much for that, Mark. Um, any other closing thoughts that we'd like to share? All right, well, I just wanna thank everyone again for joining and we will be sharing this uh, on-demand version after the call today. Thank you very much for listening and I uh, hope to see you soon. Yes, thanks everyone. Thanks, bye.